um okay so this um, uh, this block that i'm supposed to take is block 3 editing now uh, one big part of uh, uh, journalistic uh, uh, understanding is as you know one is reporting that is how you report you've had one block for that one you uh, come entire uh, uh, you know section for that now another section is writing and one part of writing is editing a very important part because as you know somebody writes and then it goes to someone else who edits and then it's proofread and finally it goes on print or online so uh um, as i said uh, editing is a huge huge part of um um what you say journalistic right journalistic ex- uh, the uh, process um, um, writing is uh, an an um, the, the bigger part the next part that comes is editing so obviously a person who goes out on the field reports and makes a report in either as a hard news or a or a soft news or features like we saw yesterday the first class was we dealt with how to write hard news reports second part we saw writing analytically we saw different kinds of writing last time a major chunk of it is feature writing third part is editing now how do you go about the editing part that is what we are going to see now okay so basically there are three units that you have to see uh three units of editing the first part of the uh, uh the first unit of editing that you have to see is headline and lead writing now i think i i don't know if i told you or told somebody else the best way to learn headlines is to write twitter feeds twitter that is immediately when you get a news you send a hu- twitter feed that is the best way to improve your writing uh, headline writing that is Uh, nowadays twitter allows a little more space earlier it used to be very restricted space for uh, uh, the twitter feeds like i think it is just around uh, less than 20 words less than 50 words no less than 20 not even 20 words i think less than 10 words or something they would allow so the uh, you had to be as precise as possible that is if you go and see a particular occurrence or if you write a story what is the gist of that story in as many less words as possible in the most conveying manner that would form the headline and that has to be put on twitter feed also like twitter if suppose you go to a place and there is an accident that has taken place or there is a huge rally which is turned violent so you are at that place and you want to write a twitter feed you uh, you would write it that way the um, what do you say um, the environmentalist rally turns violent that would be the headline environment uh, say um, uh, give me a place geneva uh, environmentalist rally at geneva turns violent that would be the headline it goes on twitter feed 1 2 3 4 5 6 words six words it it goes on twitter feed if you write like that restricted manner as much punch as possible that improves your headline writing so i i suggest all of you if you want to improve your headline writing write uh, you know breaking news report breaking news uh, one liners or twitter feeds or you know even you could call up your friend and say, convey something very urgent like these sos calls as much less space or time as possible earlier and all you used to have something called telegram every word you would have to give money so they would punch as much less information uh, more information possible in less space as possible this used to be the crux of uh, the uh, um, wire reports also during war time the agency reports agency journalism started um, in a big way boomed in a big way during the war world war 1 world war 2 Reuters and all came up at that time. They mainly agency and radio. During uh, during those times, you would find that it was you never had these facilities like email and chat and 
you know whatever ai gadgets you have nothing you had what you had was the teleprinter and you had the uh, wire sub wire technology so everything had to be sent via that as many lets um, less words as possible punching as much information as possible so that gave rise to the concept of headlines because if you write the headline in such a manner a person who is suppose you are a very busy man you just picks up the paper or looks at the digital copy in the morning and you look at it the headline should convey everything what he needs now if the headline is too catchy it should also invite him to read the rest of the story so headlines have that much of importance sometimes you you people have also done that i have also done it you just you don't have time you just you just browsing the net um you go through a site and you find a very catchy headline it's so catchy that even if you don't have time you'll want to at least go into the news report and read one or two lines at least so idea of a headline is to convey as much information as in as less uh, words as possible the gist of what the story has in store for you the news has in store for you that convey the news in as much less space as possible as fast as possible to people who don't have time maybe they would read it and they say okay i'll i'll read it later in detail okay this particular thing is happening this environment rally, rally has gone uh, berserk in this particular place so let me avoid this route or there is flooding here let me avoid so this is news also so headline has that much of importance it sometimes you might read it and keep it for a later time you know okay fine i got the news now i'll read it later so means headline just headline is enough to convey that particular article the gist of that article so headline should have that punch then headline should, should also invite the reader to read further into the story so at headline as this happens especially in feature writing headlines has, have to be impressive has to be fun has to be perky has to be interesting so so that you would feel like going deep into the story so that is one uh, thing about headline so uh, it, as i said just now the headline is a heading consisting of words and phrases falling above the story in a newspaper magazine newsletter or website in radio or tv and headline is spoken just before the news story is broadcast headline's role is to generate audience engagement by catching their attention to draw the attention of the audience editors also use pictorial el el illustrations or quote from the story sometimes you know to draw the attention you 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 uh, show a lot of uh, you know creativity also in a headline especially this happens in a catchy feature story so that is a headline so next part of this unit that we have to see is lead writing what is lead lead is the first paragraph of the story i think again i mentioned during one of my lectures i don't know if it is to you or any other class i mentioned that the lead is the first paragraph as i told you the inverted pyramid uh, the first part should have five w's and one h the lead should have five w's and one h and as you go down the report the important items you have to pack all the important items right in the beginning and the end should have the least important items this is because even if the editor cuts away something not uh, what will be lost is not so important things all the important things would have been covered whatever the reader needs would be already given to him in the first two paragraphs so the first paragraph has to have the maximum information especially for a news story all the 5w's and 1h ideally should come in the lead if nowadays what they do is the most important of the 5w's and 1h what the reader should know should come in the lead the next paragraph immediately should carry the other important things for feature you can have a slightly delayed lead but still the whatever is important has to be said at least in the first three main paragraphs for a feature story but for a lead story for a new story the first paragraph should ideally have everything all the 5w's and 1h if all 5w's and 1h cannot be accommodated in the first paragraph at least immediate paragraph you should describe the other things new story it has to be so immediate so lead is that kind of a thing and what how big the lead should be i think i also mentioned that the latest uh, uh, the latest reuters style is about 15 to 40 words earlier it was slightly big but ideally uh, reuters if 25 words 
but we can keep it as 15 to 40 words within 40 words please finish off your lead nowadays people go on describing sometimes leads go till 100 words 150 words people won't sit that much because I, all of you itself you should see how busy you people are in the mornings you do hardly get time with the newspaper or news reports so whatever you read everything has to come to you immediately later in the evening you can explore but so the idea of a news report should be to create that interest that in such a way that the person who merely skims through the report now will be prompted to come back in the evening and read the rest okay fine i read this in the morning i couldn't finish it off let me read it now that kind of interest should be also created by the lead and the headline so headline and lead are very important points in inviting the reader into the story so for a news report you have to keep it as informative as possible and for a feature story you have to keep it as interesting as possible so both the difference you please understand the news story has to be as informative and feature story has to be as interesting as possible so both these things uh, is the only difference between news and feature writing when it comes to headlines and lead so lead is the first paragraph of the story after the headline it is a most informative and impactful part of the entire story its role is to lead the audience into the story's main body as i told you all these things right now so headline may have an element of surprise or awe aimed at generating readers interest and the lead satiates that interest as well as enhances the level of user satisfaction that is a headline creates an in, sets the stage for an interest and the lead takes that interest forward and creates a level of user satisfaction that people get interested actual interest comes in with the lead so headline creates a scene of interest and lead takes it further and actually creates the interest so these two things go hand in hand so lead and headline are like you know uh, what do you say lead and headline are like um, what do you say long time buddies or you can say um uh, very very um loving husband and wife so they should go together they should they are both very elemental parts in taking the person into the story so um <clears throat> structured like an inverted pyramid uh, the headline or lead especially the lead is used as a metaphor to convey the prioritization of information headline is actually it is actually used to prioritize information also it actually says what is most important and what is not so important so as i said 5 w's and 1 h has to directly come in the beginning so that is uh, uh, the the um, the way so that is the way a lead has to be structured as i told you before so it this is because there is prioritization of information so um, and sometimes some readers or some writers do not prioritize like this the in the necessary information comes right in the uh, end sometimes or in the later paragraphs that is something called barring the lead i'm sure the, the reporters or the uh, the journalist here would know that it's called burying the lead how many of you know that has anybody told you oh no you buried the lead have you heard of that phrase isaac muzakir have you heard of that phrase no yes uh israel could you could you spell your name please yes. i'd like to call. it's israel right yes please yeah i'm sorry that i i couldn't actually read your name in full that's why right. okay israel also i think israel has heard it he is a journalist i suppose so he must have heard this particular um, you know term called burying the lead sometimes your boss might come and ask you hey why did you bury the lead which means why have you stated the important facts at a later stage and not right in front that is uh, just a moment i'm getting a call
audible have i come back yes please ah uh, okay so uh so uh, burying the lead actually means bringing all the important facts right in the later stages and not right in the beginning so that is what is called burying the lead so that shouldn't be there that is a failed headline or a lead especially a lead writing headlines need not have all the important points headlines need not have 5w's and 1h headlines should have the most important of the 5w's and 1h the most important news should be like say um uh december 26 a tsunami hit indian ocean what would be the headline tsunami hits that's enough the headline tsunami hits indian ocean that is the headline so that is what is the news is the headline the lead is what when where how why that is the lead so difference between headline and lead is in a news story is what is the news the answer to that is the headline always ask somebody is coming panting to you he'll go on mumbling look this happened that happened this happened finally you look at his face and ask what happened that is the news in one line say what happened one one or two words say what happened that is the headline say in one line what happened when it happened where it happened how it happened five w's in one h that is the lead so the difference between headline and lead is so simple what is news is the headline what when where why how who is the headline sorry is the lead so headline and lead is that in a news story in a feature story you can what is the news is again the headline but you can play on it a little bit for example i'll give you an example when um, uh i'm <coughs> sorry when uh, um, um say uh, something like um you know there are very interesting headlines also um here there was a cricketer i'm sure you know about him his name is uh, um sachin tendulkar so at one point of time when he um, broke don bradman's record the great cricketer australian cricketer don bradman's uh, record one of the newspapers in india carried a very beautiful headline which went dawn of a new era d o n dawn of a new era or dawn of the current era i think current era is what dawn of the current era so does it actually mean that sachin tendulkar is dawn no it's like he has become he has overtaken don bradman's record so there is a pun there is a fun there is a play of words there is creativity it is news but it is presented in a slightly different manner so a dawn of a new era is uh, um um that is a creative way of saying that okay now you have a new dawn or a new you have a new record of don bradman which has been broken so that is a, another beautiful way of saying that is in a creative or a feature story you say this and then lead also can be as i told you all the 5w's in one h need not be packed into the first line it's first sentence itself when it comes to a uh, feature story it can be delayed lead it can slowly you can create the drama and create an effect in it but again it everything has to be right in the beginning but it has to be slowly slowly explained so that is about uh, that is a slight uh, introduction that i gave about headline and lead i think it's not just slight all those who have worked a little bit in a newspaper or a journalistic uh, medium you will understand that this is all that you have to learn about headlines now we'll go into technicalities a little bit as i told you to avoid information overload a good lead is written better within 30 to 40 words not even 30 keep it 15 to 40 words 15 to 40 words is ideal somewhere around 25 to 30 is the perfect is the best way of expressing a lead you can stretch it maximum to 40 avoid going beyond 40 sometimes you can't avoid but as much as possible 99% please avoid so what is a lead 
as i said lead is a def- defined as a opening paragraph of a news story which is crisp and has the role of grabbing the reader's attention it is an outline of what will follow in the subsequent paragraphs in detail till now have am i clear israel i yes, say muzakir am i clear yes, till now clear 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 yes yes, yes. okay so any any time you feel i'm not clear or i'm going uh, i'm a little too fast or too slow or if it's boring please do feel free to tell me let's you know find another way to express the same thought okay so five w's and next will be you know as i told you again what is a lead a five w's in one h we have discussed that who what when where why how and we have also said how to distribute this also we discussed then subject verb approach what is that subject verb approach the lead writers usually follow a subject verb object sentence structure that makes the idea of the lead straight forward subject verb object as you say you know in a grammar thing subject and predicate what is a subject what is a predicate even in a predicate you will have one verb and one object so similar uh, methodology is followed in journalism also to such an extent to some extent with a slight twist a new twist and that is subject verb object structure sentence structure consequently active rather than passive voice is the most favored way of writing a lead sentence so which means what that is as i said a subject verb object approach means subject has to come first not the object so it has to be straight forward impactful which is more uh, impactful an active sentence or a passive sentence i suppose all of you know what is active and passive sentence all of you know what is active and passive voice israel yes. isaac do you all yes. know what is active and passive voice yes please basic basic grammar basic school grammar right so in that active yes. and passive passive voice always resort to active voice why do you think you should resort to active voice first you need to resort to active Mara, voice the, mean the, uh, the active voice is direct it goes directly yes. and then it yes yes active voice is direct impactful and people understand it much better that is the impact is very strong rather than you know going in a roundabout manner i say the ball hit the boy hard the ball hit the boy hard it's active voice the ball is the subject it the ball is what what does the action or the what is the action hitting the ball hit the boy hard suppose if i write the boy was hit by the ball in a hard manner it stretches the impact is gone more words are needed so ball hit the boy hard is preferred so three people were killed on tuesday that is good that is nice that is grammatically right but three people died on tuesday because of on a in, in a car crash three people were killed on tuesday in a car crash impact is slightly less three people died on tuesday in a car crash would make better impact so adjectives and an adverbs why is it so because object you are you are saying things in a direct manner in as less words as possible and there is action action is what you use more of verb verbs the verb is given an impact rather than adverbs and adjectives which actually dilutes the the impact of the story so that is why they say a good writer should always write should always write less of adverbs and adjectives they tend to dilute the impact of the story by reducing clarity and adding subjectivity you lose the impact of the story when you give more importance to the subject or the object what has to be given more importance in a sentence for maximum impact what what part of speech should be given maximum impact uh, importance in a sentence for maximum impact israel muzakir isaac verb verb yes the verb has to be given most importance so when will a verb be verb be given most importance when it is in the 
active voice where killed is the passive voice killed is the passive uh, active voice so or died is the active voice so use the active voice to for maximum impact so um one activity all of you could do is pick up today's newspaper and identify seven leads and enlist approaches adopt uh, the adopted for the same like look at how they have written the lead some of them will write it in passive voice some of them will write it in active voice see which makes more impact active voice or passive voice and see if they have actually um, you know written it in the 5w's in 1h format or delayed lead format whether it is in written in a feature style what kind of way they have written it have they packed all the information right in the beginning how many words the lead is in all these you could see for your understanding so that there are some questions also which you could answer based on that now um, there are some kind of leads that you could see one is the uh, summary lead summary lead as i said uh, it it conveys the main idea of the story 5w's in 1h it covers all the 5w's in 1h and it it gives the summary of the story then you have a descriptive story descriptive story is like you know it, it describes the whole scenario for example before going into a trance pamela choudhary slowly murmured 5 2 3 1 and gave birth to a 10 pound baby girl so ideally what they wanted to say is that the girl uh, a 10 pound baby girl was born to a, 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 a woman so a 10 pound baby girl is a is quite a hefty one normal delivery uh, kids do, uh, don't tend to be so huge so um, that is news something interesting that is something interesting that you know uh, usually such big babies are not uh, born initially babies newborn babies don't weigh so heavy so which which is a, a news an interesting news so <clears throat> rather than saying it directly as that you create a scene and you describe and then you say for example um, uh say um there was a story in times of india some time ago about a uh, a tortoise that died a tortoise or a turtle as you say that died that turtle was 353 years old that particular turtle or tortoise or whatever it that particular uh, amphibian uh, which died was 350 years old so the lead of the times of india was when the turtle had a name let's take it as x when x was born so the lead is when x was born comma the french revolution was yet to take place the world wars had yet not been fought and india had not yet got its freedom next sentence now 353 years later when it breathed its last india is on the verge of becoming a space power as well as a uh, one of the financial capitals of the world one of the financial capitals of the world so that is with that descriptive lead it is actually giving two scenarios contrasting it's such a beautiful lead that you know 353 years is the span of a particular animal's lifetime before it was born how the world was and after it was born how the world or rather india was that kind of contrast is created which creates an impact in the minds of the reader wow some being which was born before french revolution and i have only read it in new, in in my, in my history textbooks my mother has written her read it in her history textbooks probably my grandfather's grandfather might have also only read it in his notebooks or textbooks or here say whatever it is now right. there is this animal like this which 353 years ago it was born and then the french revolution hadn't even taken place that's an interesting thing so such kind of descriptive lead also can be adopted that is usually adopted to create an impact and usually done for feature stories you know it is mostly done for feature stories but nowadays they do it for news stories also to create a uh, what do you say uh, an impact or rather a scene for example the government offensive launched to clearing roving isis guerrillas has started giving results then you say the what it is in an offensive yesterday so such and such thing happened so you give a Uh, the scenario and then you go on to the main story but this has to, in a new story it has to be done fast 
in a in a uh, otherwise you have to be so very impactful with your description it takes a lot of good writing descriptively uh, for this usually i witnesses i witnesses or either you have to be an i witnesses or you have to get quotes from an i witnesses then you can write a good descriptive lead then question lead is it's uh, um, the question lead creates questions in the mind of the reader in such a way that after reading the lead you would want to seek answers in the story so it's it's a way to direct the uh, reader into the story so newspaper readers look for answers in that story so hence leads posing questions are usually generally you have to avoid because lead is to in, lead is to inform the reader it is not to create questions in the lead re reader you can create questions when when you are writing an analytical piece when you are writing an investigative piece when you are writing a descriptive feature story you can create you can use all these things but for a news report it is ideal not to use uh, too much of description you can use description but too much of description and question leads are best avoided so Uh, uh so that is a question lead next is caption lead caption lead is strong verbs and direct sentences are used with the objective of creating maximum impact such an impact is achieved by jolting the readers with action words written in a simple way something terrible has happened you want to actually jolt the reader then you use a caption lead or a punch lead how will you do that do that for example uh, um um the prime minister of a country assassinated killed how would you write the lead the next day's newspapers or websites can carry the uh, punch lead as pm assassinated or chancellor killed or president shot at three words maximum impact maximum news conveyed yes this man is no more now this man who is a supreme person is no more that is a caption lead or punch lead so um uh, again that is used in extreme cases not every now and then when when something terrible has happened war breaks out uh, or iraq us at war these are punch headlines or you can say um uh, israel at war and these are punch headlines so another kind of headlines you know leads can also be categorized upon the subject or context of the content like quotation lead contrast lead statico lead u lead so how will you do that what is quotation lead quotation lead is it uh, quotes provide you know usually colors and credibility to the story by recording facts as they come from the news maker basically quotes are to substantiate your writing to better your writing but quotes are generally paraphrased to drop words which may increase a story's impact sometimes um, quotes will you know use words will paraphrase uh, um, they are generally you know what do you say adjusted to drop a certain words so so as to keep mac give maximum impact to the story you cannot write everything that the quote the news maker says so and another objective of paraphrasing is to save the newspaper space and also the readers time again as i said for maximum impact in as less space and time as possible that way you have to adjust the quote of the uh, the the news maker but you cannot paraphrase you cannot cut down the quote so as to leave the meaning of what the person said you cannot change the meaning of the code you cannot leave the intent or the meaning of the code not just the meaning even the intent shouldn't be lost when you paraphrase in order to fit the code in that particular space and for that particular reader so um uh, that part even in a code quotation is used as a lead also you have to keep all these things in mind as much less space you can fine tune the code but never to leave the intent or the meaning so for example a uh, one one uh, um one uh, quote example is quotation lead example is 1998 atal bihari vajpay said this to fellow parliamentarians government will come and go but country must remain in intact he said government will come and go country must remain intact so this can be a quotation lead <clears throat> when you are saying something about 
uh, say um, um, how governments changed so if you're going to write an article on that quotation lead ideally this is used for analytical writing or descriptive writing or some kind of uh, you know writing on history of something for example a new parliament house is uh, inaugurated you want to write about it you can write this you can start with a quotation lead or you're writing about a particular event you can you can you know write in a particular manner in which you know you write an important you start with an important quote so next is contrast lead contrast lead is you pitch two contrasting ideas together and create an interest in the minds of the reader this type of lead is drawing comparisons between two situations as i said uh, no that, that is not a contrast lead that is uh, that is that tortoise thing is a different kind of a lead descriptive lead but this is a contrast contrast lead like um, two years ago two school friends pulled in their pocket money to start a website today that website has 2 million unique visitors so which means what happened two years ago what happened now two years ago this man had nothing now after two years this this group has everything so contrast the two things so people will be asking this question okay how come this happened that kind of curiosity will be created and it will take you that reader into the rest of the story again this this, this kind of lead is used mostly in feature writing it also is used in news writing not news writing news feature writing or investigative reports you use this kind of leads and then stick then the next the next lead is staccato lead the staccato lead is mainly uh, when the time element is at its prime focus and the most important information is in the last line for example almost 30 years ago back in 1989 after years of uninterrupted happiness in her country home light went out of divya's life she lost her eyesight completely this year in may probably her answers were her her prayers were answered now she can see this is very similar to the contrast lead what happened some years ago and what happens that but here timeline is more important because all these 30 years 40 years she couldn't see now all of a sudden she can see so this timeline is important so the uh, the prime focus is the time element and the important information is given in the last for maximum impact to communicate the progress in time um, a series of phrases with recurring punctuation marks and all is used and finally you come to the punch thing so it is more like a descriptive lead as you say as i said uh, 350 years ago such and such thing happened and now this thing is happening that is also a staccato lead if you want it but that is more descriptive this staccato lead is entirely based on the time that is 30 years ago she couldn't see but after 30 years she can see so it is something very important that you know this time is what is more important here it's not that what she couldn't see or she could see is it comes in later. Within this 30 years, what is more important is she gained her eyesight. So this 30 years timeline is the prime focus. That is staccato lead. So when the time element becomes important, that becomes staccato lead. Then you lead. The use of you. Did you know this? That is questioning and you lead. That is, did you know that something happened like this? That is, uh, um, if you're leading with that, it's, a, it's, it's mostly used for, as I said, questioning or uh, investigative reports, analytical reports that, that is used. You lead addresses the reader directly. It may be written as a question or as a statement and implications of news events may also be used to develop you lead. As I said, implications of news, news events. For example, uh, uh, if you are an empathic leader, you will easily identify signs whether your subordinate wants to quit or is just bored. A lifestyle story, yes, but an impactful story. Or if you actually went into Gaza right now, you would understand how harassed the people there are with the war. You're, you're, you're saying something like this as an eyewitness. You are going there, you are seeing this thing, and you are telling your reader, if you go here instead of me, you can see this. So this is you lead to create an impact, to describe. this. What I said right now is partly descriptive and partly you lead. So you lead is also 
uh, you know it may be implications of a news event that implications analysis of a news event to explain that further to create an impact for that further you can use a you lead doubt till anything any doubts so far or can i move forward what move forward ma okay okay no doubt Okay. okay. Uh, anything, please do ask me. Okay. Next is the blind identification lead. In that identification of the newspaper is dropped, newsmaker is dropped or delayed because what has happened to him is of importance, even though he is not a well-known person in his community. However, his name is used in the main body of the story. This is to ensure that the relevance and the news value of the story are not lost. for example an army commando's son was attacked on mall road this morning so which means the person is of importance but i am not mentioning his name right in the beginning because he may be a a man of importance but he is not a well known person in his community he is not the prime minister he is just another person but the way he is related to another person or the person that he is himself might be of importance for example i am a uh, um an army person a security officer i have met with an accident a security officer met with an accident today i am an important person or a security officer was manhandled today so a security officer being manhandled is of importance but the security officer's identity is not important the security officer might be thomas or uh, you know um, uh, isaac or aparna or christiana or kavish or whoever it may be israel any may be, whoever it may be whatever he is his name is that he is an is a security officer who is standing in for the law and order situation of a region he is of importance because he is the man to go to in case of any emergency by the common population and he should be revered and he should be respected he should be a man of ethics and he shouldn't be attacked because if he is done then the society as a large should stand up for him court should stand up for him so such a person being attacked is of importance so a security his designation is more important than his identification in that particular manner you use the person's what designation more like an an army commando son was attacked on mall road next sentence you can immediately next sentence you can mention his name the victim whose name is kailash is just 15 years old and he has been admitted to the aims trauma center where his condition is said to be critical or you could write a 90 year old man was killed on the road the next paragraph this person was killed while he was trying to cross the road the name of the person can be written why is the 90 year old he doesn't belong to any government or authority no he is a senior citizen and that person having to cross the road alone uh, and a, a, a car coming and hit no that is not done either some he had to be helped or the car or uh, whatever vehicle is coming shouldn't be speeding or there should be proper uh, you know crossing mechanisms it is a failure of the state in one way or the other so that has to be mentioned there also a blind identification lead is important so you what you could again do is you could pick up the story newspaper today and identified identify where they have you know improv used you lead blind lead staccato lead contrast lead try and see which lead and you know list it list it in a book if you can that is an exercise which can help you to hone your lead identification and writing skills okay so um there are also things like you know sometimes descriptive lead is also very similar to 5w's and 1h lead but uh, it's slightly different because 5w's and 1h can be a direct lead but descriptive lead even while be, uh, even while having all the 5w's and 1h can still describe what is going on so ideally that is a basic difference now headline and its function i think we have mentioned about it already headline functions of a headline is to attract audience attention to figure out who your readers are for example um, 
some headlines might interest some kind of people some for example i am a person who's interested in fashion so all the stories that have a fashion related headline will interest me some person is interested in crime so all that which has a uh, headline that is crime related will have will interest that person i like sports so a sporty headline i like it not a sporty headline a sports related headline that what is a sport difference between a sporty headline and a sport related sport related means something related to sports sporty headline means a smarty and happy headline a perky headline is a sporty headline so um that kind of lead will attract a person who is interested in sports so uh, it will help i didn't he- I, 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 headline I, helps a person identify helps the uh, organization identify its readers especially websites newspaper it's slightly difficult so to convey a message which is complete as i told you it, the headline actually conveys a message which is total Uh, then uh, it, to facilitate the reader in reading the whole story it will give a gist of the whole story and help the reader know if he really wants to read the rest of the story if it is a new story if he has got all the information in the lead itself if it's a descriptive story he will be enthused to read the rest of the story or he might whatever the story might be if the lead is good he'll keep the story for reading later when he finds time so it facilitates the reader in reading the whole story in one way or the other so uh, that is one thing oh gosh Mm. then next is um the um the last part i said facilitate the reader interest the interest created in a reader is also part of this okay you can give perky headlines happy headlines uh interesting intriguing headlines which will help you go into the story and read it so anything that hand holds the writer reader into reading the story that could be a lead or a the sorry that could be a headline that could be a headline i'm talking about headlines here basically so uh, to attract the audience attention to figure out who your readers are to convey a message which is complete and to facilitate the reader in reading the whole story that is a headline so headline writing process is basically display and point size i think i told you in a news story the display and point size of a headline which be much bigger than the story itself all of you know that headlines and that too in page 1 the main story which have it will have a bigger headline the rest of the story will have a smaller headlines so depending on the size of the headline you will decide the reader will get an idea of how important the news is so suppose page 1 first story will have the biggest font so you know understand so this is the big this is a big breaking story so depends on um uh, the headline size is used to indicate the headline imp- the importance of the story so um then <clears throat> sorry and how it is conveyed is uh, <coughs> i'm sorry 236 earlier this used to be in, in, in before nowadays we don't do nowadays or everything is done on computer earlier they used to type set manually you know so for that how would it be given as um, the uh, editor after editing the story he would write it in a bracket 2362 that is what does it mean two means two column story 36 is the font size of the headline and two is it is um, uh, the uh, the the headline has to be arranged in two lines or two deck headline so 2362 means the typeset person would understand it's a two column story 36 is the font size and it has to be arranged in two decks the headline has to run into two lines so this is base this but nowadays nothing nowadays you have dummies created where you just need to drag and drop the dummy and the work would be done <coughs> sorry so a shorthand for headlines and all is there uh, as as i said it's not important right now but nevertheless you could just you know understand what it is um, uh, for example you know you have the height uh, height of uh, type size is measured in points by whereas width is measured in pica points 
it's called pica point that is sh- the headline uh, shorthand uh, unit what is mentioned for headlines is number of columns and the type size and number of lines is what i said before the now the height of the type size is measured in points its width is measured in pica point the type the, the font whatever is there uh, the height and the width of the font is measured in pica points uh the type sizes are standard type size which is equal to or smaller than 12 point is best used for body text and is rarely used for uh, uh headlines so type size is standard even now it is so that 12 point is usually used for body and larger than this point is used for uh, font size that is usually 14 to 84 is used for headlines that is 14 84 is 14 is a height and 84 is the Uh, in the range that is the range is usually 14 to 84 depending on the importance of the story so type size height of type size is measured in points and width is measured in picas so usually the height uh, for the body is usually 12 point and for the um, text that is headlines it is usually 14 to 84 points so such headlines are also known as display type headlines so big headlines is called display type headlines okay so with with weight and style of headline i think all these things are basically you know type setting uh, requirements now type setting is a very cust- computerized process right now in most newspapers or in digital media it's not required otherwise it's a very 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 computerized process so all these things a sub editor need to know it so much in detail but still for the sake of knowing uh, you know uh, width of a headline is decided based on newspaper columns associated associated, associated with a news story when a headline is bigger than the column space provided double decker headline is used now column space is just two and you need a bigger uh, headline you you use two deck headlines but that is also customized right now that is it is split into two lines setting the distance between the two letters is known as kerning the text that is between two letters there is a space that is known as kerning it helps reduce space between the words allowing the headline to fit into the given bit sometimes you can kern a little bit but you can't kern more because otherwise the letters will jump into each other so you can't kern too much also you will have to space it a little bit but you can adjust it to some extent so that the headline fits into the required space bolder the font the greater is the weight of the headline so that is as i said the bigger the font the greater is the weight of the headline or the more importance that is given to the story the, that that is priority of the story is denoted by the bolder font weight is also related to the font style it is also the font style headline font style would be different for a main story and would be different for a, a story from the inside so uh, stories written in light semi light style has lesser weight than stories written in condensed or bold fonts similarly font style also helps to decide the weight of a news story for example headlines in sans serif font styles are soft news or feature news and headlines in serif fonts have more weight newspapers use, using sans serif fonts only opt only for a font family providing them variety of fonts and st- uh, font styles and weights that is um, there are a lot of you know the different kind of uh, font uh, styles so some styles are used for feature stories some styles are used for the new stories depending on the impact that that the story carries so newspapers using sans serif fonts only there are newspapers that use use sans serif story uh, fonts only they opt for a font family providing them variety of font styles and weights so they use a variety of font styles and weights to denote the priority of the story so font style is very important I'll, the gist of the matter is font style is very important in telling us the different the, the priority the story has now any doubt in this because this is slightly technical that is why i am asking you any doubt in this no miss okay i'm moving forward so deciding the news angle as i told you there are various ways of deciding the news angle so um, the the spin you impart to the story the the headline decides that what is news that is a news angle and that comes in as a headline 
so your angle could be you know um uh, uh, the angle sets the tone of the story you can decide the head uh, the news angle with the headline of the story so writing the headline as i told you the best way to write a headline attention grabbing headline is to understand the story fully that is what what is the news is understanding the story understand the story fully and then write it as i told you um write with the feeds uh, uh, and never never write a headline that contradicts contradicts with your story that is it should not mislead the reader you are writing okay there is uh, um um tension on the roads and as you read it shouldn't be a marriage procession no or maybe such a thing is imp- it, it's interesting it can be interesting such contrast leads are interesting uh, to create an impact but is that is fun that's not used in serious newspapers or that's not is new used in news stories but if suppose something is written very very seriously and if you if if it happens to be nothing but uh, you know there is you're giving a different headline for a different story then that impact won't be created you will say okay fine uh, this particular person was elected as president that is the headline but what you're writing it about is some obsolete election so some uh, you know unwanted uh, um, um election process that means you have misled the uh, reader so you should make sure the head headline does not mislead the reader so that is very important so explain news angles with examples from stories published in the front page of your newspaper that is one exercise that is given in your uh, material you could actually go to your uh, newspaper and see the news angle that the headline takes and you could say oh, sorry yeah so uh, as i said like you had uh, uh, the lead you have kind of headlines also you have label headline um, which is you know a label headline is given look this year's grammy award winners that is a label and then you have la- uh, the names that will come uh, later so you have a label headline this year's grammy winners that's a label headline so descriptive headline as i said all the 5w's in one h or 4w's in one h whatever it is it can come right in the uh, uh, in in the headline usually why is not given as part of headline because that is part of the story 4w's in one h could be part of a headline in a descriptive headline but descriptive headlines are usually uh, you know they they are too long ideally avoid it but nowadays they are used a lot in digital writing because digital writing in order that uh, search engine optimization need they use a lot of uh, descriptive headlines everything is said so that you know first click your story would appear first so that way descriptive headline is used comment headline Mm. and this, you 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 have something happening but you want to comment on it for example uh, um pakistan is trying to sabotage india's bid at the un you could write desperate pakistan out to sabotage india's efforts at the un you're giving a, a, a tinge to it that is pakistan is desperate to do it how do you know pakistan is desperate or not you don't know but still you are commenting on it from its actions so you are actually making a comment headline ideally avoid it but sometimes uh, for diplomatic purposes because if it is an indian paper they would write that or uh, you know uh, if it is a hindu uh, pakistani paper they wouldn't write it so uh, sometimes for diplomatic purposes people use that ideally journalistic point of view better to avoid comment headlines then quotation headline uh, quotation headline is usually uh, you know is usually used uh, when you have to as i said it, it um, as regards quotation lead that we discuss something important events happening something you know uh, uh, an explainer or some kind of stuff you use quotation lead similarly here quotation headline is used in order that the impact is not reduced as i said the impact should not be reduced the it should not be uh, in the paraphrase paraphrasation impact or intent should not be reduced yet you have to mention what is the matter it's a challenge 
and it is used rarely in headlines but you can use it when you want to create a lot of impact i did not do it in quotes the person will be intrigued what is who's who did not do it let me read the story and find out that kind of interest but use it very sparingly because it's it can be you know uh, it may not create the necessary interest sometimes so question headline next is question headline which creates a which asks a question um uh, is is jo, is um joe biden on his way out so we'll see what is he going to resign let me read the story so that kind of interest is created so something that is actually in the process or in the news someone who is in the news suddenly if you are asking a development part of what he is doing or she is doing something that has to happen in future that creates an interest so you write that but it is it, it has got an analytical tinge to it so better avoid it but sometimes nowadays you use any kind of headlines to create an impact you just want to garner readers especially in the digital media so people use all these things so it's also good for pro and con stories pros and cons also you can you know do do this uh, many readers or professionals actually would not go for this because it's a guessing thing as i said headlines should actually convey this guessing part is also good because as i said nowadays any news is even bad news is news so to create an impact people do all sort of things so nowadays all these things matter but ideally professional people uh, the original old school journalists usually avoid all these things i wouldn't ask you to be old school um, please do things that you feel is timely but be ethical that's all now headline props headline props we uh, should have a you know headlines can be two or three parts sometimes if you want to create an impact so maybe a exclusive page is there for elections you will have a shoulder which says elections uh, you will have another kicker say says that says you know uh, leading the way that is you want to see who's leading in what all uh, constituencies so it can have a shoulder it can have a kicker kicker means you know actually you kick the news shoulder is you segregate the news so uh, that way you have um, uh, different constituents of headlines then comes the final headline then you have a strap line you have a headline then immediately after that you have a strap line so what is most important you write it as headline four w's in one edge strap line explains it a little bit for example main headline was um, sensex gains 40 points that is a main headline now if you want to explain a little more but you can't pack everything into the headline second most important thing but you don't want to pack it in the headline because of the impact being lost you could write the strap line as revival of monsoon has done the magic so what the idea of the headline should be that sensex gains due to the rains coming back that can be had nowadays strap is avoided in digital media mostly they write it as headline itself as i said descriptively if it were digital media they would mostly write it as sensex returns to or sensex get gains 40 points with the rain coming back they would write it like that in newspaper it would take more space one and less impact so what they will do is they'll just write sensex gains 40 points very very direct lead di direct headline then strap line would be revival of monsoon has done the magic that would be a sub head headline a sub headline is called a strap line so so that was it that is one thing okay so then uh, a cross head is again cross it is positioned within the story if a sub head as they say one paragraph within two paragraphs if if you have to mention or highlight some important part in a paragraph you give a cross head so that is a uh, uh, somewhere in the running text then um, see the, all these things are um, these uh, sub elements of uh, a headline depends on the jurisdiction or depends on the interest or the uh, the uh, the what do you say Uh, the sensibilities of a newspaper 
it is basically a newspaper or a news organization that decides how many sub headlines or sub uh, uh, headline constituents should be there there could be a side head some people call it a side head for example as i said kicker can be called a side head also where you can say city briefs or corporation news something like that so which you would know that okay the reader would identify what they are going to talk about is corporation news so such kind of differences can be given in a uh, newspaper or a digital or um, uh, digital portal news portal but it is entirely the 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 uh, you know prerogative of the news organization so that is it so then um, then you have something like uh, you know uh, uh, navigation that is limited to one or two words navigation head guides the readers from the stories to the stories of their interest it's placed in the middle of a running story to highlight its subject by breaking the grayness of the that is right in the beginning for example um, say what do you say film review right in the middle they put it so that they would know that this is a film review and then you know it would be navigation also would be easy it will be easy on the eyes so you use such small small headline props so again as i said headline props what what i have said till now these many headline props uh, may be used in a different way in a news paper or a news organization it entirely depends on the jurisdiction of the or uh, that is prerogative of the news organization then um, you get you have feature headlines as i said i think we discussed all that also difference what difference is it from uh, the uh, news headlines it is more uh, punchy it is more descriptive it's more fun it's more there, there's a lot of creative elements used used there's writing elements used you know uh, pun used uh, uh, for example um, one example that is given in your own uh, textbook is um men too must pause so which means you know what happens to men between 40 to 55 elementally emotionally they should also slow down so men too must pause it is it is a pun on a physiological change that happens in a woman's body so that also is extended to a man saying men too should pause so that's fun that's pun and fun that kind of quirky headlines can also be used in feature stories so tip to write feature stories again try to see it differently try to see funny elements in it and try, uh, you you try to as i said about feature writing the same way talk it out with a very uh, in a fun way with a friend you know when you talk to friends such kind of quirky things come up so you write it so that becomes and something a little uh, not too obtuse but something which can be shared on a public forum also that can become a feature headline the feature headline is it gives you the feeling of you know you're talking with a friend so that it's something interesting part of it so that is so only thing is usually you keep the brand name corporate brands all these things out of the uh, feature headlines because that will look make it look like an advertorial rather than news because features is also big news now headline writing pros and cons as i said do keep it uh, do's and don'ts keep it short and simple remember your target audience i'm just recapturing whatever we said keep placement positioning and currency of the news story in mind avoid jargons be specific use numerals instead of words please use numerals instead of words in headlines for space constraints space you'll save space so ideally according to journalism 1 to 9 you should use it in words and after 9 you should use it in letter that is uh, letters you all know that that is 1 is written as o n e but 11 is written as 1 1 so but in a headline even o n e should be written as 1 don't write it as uh, a word so avoid use numerals for numbers instead of words avoid uh, auxiliary verbs is are and articles a and the try and use uh, words sentences without verbs auxiliary verbs that is supporting verbs like is and are and the articles past events are reported in the present tense no whatever has happened in the past headline always will be in the present tense because you are giving the news now that currency part should come even headline not just headline even the lead should be in the 
current give a sense of currency so it should be even the lead should be in the present tense or the present perfect tense that is he has said not he said the prime minister said today is not right the prime minister has said that such and such things will happen it has to be the lead after that you can go into the uh, reported speech or direct speech now internet headlines again one big factor of an internet headlines is you should take care of the seo that is search engine optimization as i told you uh, descriptive leads are usually preferred mainly because seos it will be right at the top your your story so that has to be kept in mind when you give headlines that is um, <clears throat> web engine separates good headlines from bad ones by ranking them in terms of serp so you have to actually uh, um you know um give a good headline and what is one aspect main com main aspect of a good headline is it has to uh, be in tandem it, it has to subscribe to the search engine optimization policy that is a uh, it's a marketing it slightly marketing technique but more than marketing you would want your story to be read first so that way you have to think like if i give this headline will my story be right at the top so as much information as possible you have to pack it in your headline so that's why i said descriptive leads are most preferred and direct descriptive leads headline should be short and crisp yes but uh, it should have everything a web friendly headline should not is exceed 6 to 10 words Uh, and should not exceed seventy characters, uh, beyond which headlines would be cropped by the uh, um, the the whatever uh, I mean search engine you are on. It will be cropped, and a truncated headline will come. But that doesn't mean that your uh, sto your headlines should be punchy, question, uh, half baked. No, your 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 headline should be crisp. clear concise descriptive enough to en encapsulate the whole story into that it's a big big uh, challenge yet it has to be what do you say um, it has to uh, you have to make sure that it is not truncated so um again as i said two point sizes are only employed as you know in a digital headline headlines are small the other things is 12 points and here only two points are employed so <laughs> landing page will have larger fonts as you go deep into it uh, uh, the home page and category page pages you will have reduced the landing page will have maximum landing page probably would be the most important page when you actually hit the particular story that is a landing page home page will be reduced font because you have to pack the entire whatever is on the offer in the front the home page so everything will be reduced but once you click on a particular story you land on a page that landing page will have a larger font because you are reading just that story exclusively so uh, that is uh, um, uh, web headlines operate on newness and not on news values news values i that, that i don't actually agree to you have to uh, pertain to news values but newness is also there it has to be new it has to be different from the other um, you because why they say newness is the, you know web pages and web stories and headlines are all in response to the person who's reading it that has to be there but still some ethical values also need to be followed difference from print headlines you all know what the differences are whatever we said it if you you can make it a uh, you can concise uh, the whole thing it's placed the web headline is placed across web pages where newspaper headline is placed right above the news story web headline is placed across the web page one story one web page will entirely have be devoted for that particular story whereas you know how a newspaper is in newspapers varieties of fonts and font sizes are used whereas what governs a web page, web story or a web headline is basically seo you know everything everything is governed by seo popularity everything is governed by seo 
so that is why rigorous seo and meo are done, smo are done on the story to maximize its reach uh, and again you know print so story cannot be changed at will whereas web headlines can be altered as per the requirement of the landing page positioning of web web headlines is dynamic unlike that in print you can you know you can keep it in such a way that you get maximum you know display and hits the most important print story goes on top of the page whereas display of the web line web headlines is decided as per the timing of the happening where display of the web headline keeps changing whereas newspaper you know that once fixed it remains so that is headlines and lead any doubt dear friends please do tell me please respond otherwise i won't know Yeah, it's fine, man. Board? Yes, yeah, fine. Board? That's what I asked. Too much of theory? Too much of theory, friends? Board? Do you need a break? Oh, uh, maybe a five minute break. break? Yeah, maybe five okay. minutes. Okay. Okay. Let's get back by. It's two fifty-three here. Let's get back by. Say, what time? Three o'clock. Okay. Okay. Bye.